Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Talk Show. I'm your host, Nick Peters, and this week's episode is from here in Liverpool. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, when I was younger, so much younger than today. Hi, this is Ray Goodman and this is John Grant and we are the Joint Managing Directors of Goodman Grant Solicitors Limited, specialist dental lawyers operating from Liverpool, Leeds and London and we specialise in dealing with sales, purchases and any other transactions or matters that affect dental practices. We are here to talk to you today about uh, how the UK dentistry market is evolving specifically with regard to the sales and purchase of uh, dental practices. We are involved in buying and selling practices across the country uh, on a daily basis. We get to see pretty much what's going on in the market and uh, what's happening in terms of valuation of practices and certainly the market is still very buoyant and uh, practices uh, seem to be going for an ever increasing amount of money for goodwill notwithstanding various factors that, that one perhaps might think would be affecting the uh, goodwill market. So we certainly in respect of NHS practices that we have some degree of uncertainty as to what's going to happen if and when the new contract comes out. Now I know you heard Jimmy Steele speak recently uh, at the dental show in Manchester. Yeah I was at the dentistry show in March obviously a few months ago now and there was a platform of speakers Jimmy Steele, Roger Matthews uh, who's the chief executive of uh, Demplan. Uh, there was a government uh, minister of some description uh, and there was another uh, hospital dentist there. And without boring you with everything that was said, certainly Jimmy Steele's recommendations that we move uh, towards prevention rather than cure are laudable. Uh, nobody, quite frankly, in their right mind would, would uh, disagree with that. But how that's delivered uh, within the auspices of the NHS uh, um, remains a matter of some considerable debate. Um, I thought it was very interesting to note that um, although the government had been talking about uh, what essentially is a capitation scheme, uh, they have not in any of their deliberations or discussions or consultations actually sought the advice of Demplan, who are probably the world's leading provider of capitation schemes. Um, what the government minister said uh, repeatedly when asked any difficult questions such as how associates are going to be paid was, yes we know that these are difficult issues, we're going to investigate everything fully and we're going to make sure that we get it right. Uh, my reading of that was actually then no further on now in deciding what the new contract is going to look like than they were when they started the new pilots about three years ago. The fear quite frankly, is that they're going to do the same now as they did in 2006, which is to ignore all of the pilots which they've been running and to bring in a contract which um, most suits their own wishes, uh, which quite frankly is to save as much money as possible. Well, so we've got this question mark hanging over the new contract, of course, between now and 2016, when I think it's now mooted that the new contract is going to first see the light of day. We've got uh, a general election. Um, and it could all change, it could all go out the window. We don't know obviously who's going to be elected and we don't know what their priorities are going to be. Um, I think it's unlikely that their prior that, that high up on their list is reforming um, the dental contract. Um, alternatively, we might see the present government rushing it through before the end of their term um, so that it can't be fiddled with too easily by uh, whoever gets in afterwards. But the upshot is we just don't know. But because there is this uncertainty and because we do believe that the, uh, um, the Office of Fair Trading have stated that dentists should not be granted open-ended contracts as they are at the moment, um, that whatever the contract is, it, there is a strong likelihood that it could be for a fixed term with a provision perhaps for retendering after a fixed term of life. I can't see it being less than five years. But whatever it is, that's going to have an impact on the market because at the moment, because dentists almost uniquely have, are in a position where they have 
uh, certainly if they have GDS contracts, that they are open-ended. Uh, the banks take great comfort in that. So we'll lend dentists over 10, 15 or, or, or even 20 years to enable them to purchase practices. If that certainty uh, goes or is limited to a period of five years, then the banks are going to have a problem in uh, lending unsecured uh, against the goodwill of a practice where they only have a guaranteed income for a shorter period of time. And if the banks can't lend, then that clearly is going to have a, 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 a huge knock-on effect on valuations of NHS practices. So we may see a, sw a swing towards private practices. And I think, in fact, if the new contract, um, when it does come out, limits the time of the contract and or effectively closes the loopholes that enable uh, the NHS contracts, which are expressed to be non-assignable, but, but are effectively assignable by using the partnership provisions at the moment. If they close that, it makes them absolutely non-assignable. I think we'll probably see a mass exodus from NHS dentistry because people will want to preserve the value of the goodwill that they've built up and, in fact, may, that they may have paid substantial money for when they acquired the practice. Uh, and if it becomes... Uh, totally non-saleable under the NHS uh, regulations, then I, I can't see that uh, uh, many of them are going to stay in the NHS for very long. NASDAQ, uh, the National Association of Specialist Dental Accountants of Lawyers and Lawyers, um, which I happen to be chairman of the Lawyers Group at the moment, uh, produces on a quarterly basis uh, a survey of all the deals that have gone through um, handled by its members, which is 40-odd accountants and about 17 uh, uh, specialist dental lawyers. Um, and, and Alan Suggett, who is um, on the technical committee of NASDAQ, uh, kindly prepares these uh, statistics um, showing both valuations that have been carried out and actual deals that have been done. And you can see from the graph that valuations and deals have largely followed each other since this graph started in January 2008. So what tends to happen is that the valuations and deals tend to move uh, in a parallel line and have been roughly from around about 75% of goodwill as a percentage of fee income in uh, January 2008 um, they have gone largely between 75 and 100% of uh, goodwill as a percentage of fee income until we get to uh, April 2013 when they're up at around about 105% for deals. And then in October 2013, that's the quarter ending to that October of last year, um, suddenly the valuations uh, graph has shot up to 125%. Now, there are no other such radical uh, movements uh, between valuations and actual deals done, and it could mean one of two things. It could mean that, in fact, um, valuations have, have, have gone up uh, and that deal uh, costs of goodwill will, will, will follow that over the next few months and that uh, indicates a significant uplift in the market value of, of goodwill. It could be that there are other factors at play. The, the, the first thing that um, occurs to me about the graph is it doesn't split between NHS practices and, and private practices no. and I, I think that um, if, were it to be split in that manner then you would see uh, the goodwill value of NHS practices is consistently higher than that of private practices. Um, it also doesn't split the, um, the, the graph according to regions and again from our experience what we are seeing is a, uh, a real feeding frenzy, I would describe it, in, in London and the South East or within the M25 corridor where uh, people are quite frankly offering ridiculous money for practices which is totally unsustainable from a financial perspective and the rest of the country where we're being more sensible. Um, the third thing that I would say is that this is a graph which is showing uh, deals as a percentage of turnover. Um, 
the way in which practices are actually valued today is by uh, a formula from a multiple of net, inc uh, of net income because obviously if you had two practices both doing a million pound turnover but one had ten thousand pounds profit and the other one had half a million pounds profit you don't need us uh, to tell you which is the more valuable practice but it reflects what we've seen that since 2008 there has been a gradual increase in goodwill values, um, both the private and the NHS. NHS uh, practices, uh, the goodwill values have been more. And it may well be that the, the, um, the last um, point on that graph with the valuations is probably a result of, as I say, the feeding frenzy that's going on now and the fact that there are so many deals which are going through at um, significantly higher uh, values than we've seen previously. Um, the banks won't lend at those kind of values, so they also tend to be by people who've got access to private funds. Um, the factors which um, are driving this increase are the large corporates are continuing to acquire. There are a significant and increasing number of uh, small to medium-sized corporates who are also very acquisitive. And you also have a number of associates who, if they uh, are sensible, may think that um, associate income is headed one way and it's not upwards, and that therefore their only opportunity to earn a reasonable living from being a professional and having spent six years uh, training and, and uh, be becoming very specialist, the only way that they're going to get a reasonable return is by owning their own practice. Another possible factor for the, the, the valuations to, to, to suddenly jump up is that perhaps uh, many of these valuations are not being done with a view to sale but, but with a view to incorporating the practices where it's in the dentist's best interest to get as high a valuation as possible for, for the goodwill because that's going to form the basis of the purchase price that he notionally pays the limited company, uh, which determines the amount of tax saving that he's going to make. So many of these valuations could possibly be commissioned in relation to incorporation, um, and the valuers perhaps looking at things on a slightly different basis than they would if they were valuing for sale, uh, hence the higher valuations. The fact is that at the moment we don't know it all. We'll, we'll, we'll have a better idea when the next quarter um, NASDAQ stats come out or even after perhaps two more quarters we'll see if it settles down whether this was just a blip or, or whether you know the very heady valuations that we are seeing for practices and that practices are actually being sold for now is, is not the end game that they are going to go higher. <laughs>